Welcome. This is James Corbett of The Corbett Report. It is the 20th of October 2011 here in Japan, and today I am talking to Morgan Lesko, the founder of WikiWorld Order at wikiworldorder.com and youtube.com slash wikiworldorder. He is a longtime uh, supporter of The Corbett Report, so it's great to have him on the program today for his maiden voyage. Uh, so, Morgan, thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure, James. Thank you for all your work, and thank you for having me. Well, excellent. Well, I wanted to get you on today because I, I noticed uh, you've got uh, new videos up on WikiWorld Order about your um, experiences at Occupy Sacramento. Um, it looks like some very interesting uh, things were happening down there. So so perhaps you can give us an overview of some of the sights and sounds of what's happening down there. Uh, sure thing, James. Um, so the, the first day I, uh, I took more of a media participant role and I brought a sign down and... Um, did a lot of video footage. I took a lot of video footage throughout the day and I compiled that that night and the next day got it uploaded pretty fast. But um, after work on Friday, I went back down with the um, with the intention to get arrested that night um, to basically stand for our, re uh, our right to assemble in this public park. So it didn't play out that well and Saturday uh, I somebody else ended up getting arrested and I had to find a place to sleep in Sacramento but it was fine and fun and a good adventure but uh, Saturday I really took on a lot more responsibility with the whole encampment and I, I started uh, building an information booth where we both gave out our sort of official information things that are directly from our media tent or decided upon from the General Assembly uh, and then another half of the table, which I sort of called, need some info, take some info, have some info, leave some info. And, uh, and that worked out really well. And it was a great way to visibly show people who had only heard the mainstream version of what was going on, that we have both, we have people dropping off Tea Party magazines and socialist flyers at the same table. And all are welcome. And, and we have a lot to agree upon, you know. Right, yeah, I think that is important to stress because a lot of people have gotten carried away with trying to portray this as one one thing or another when I think it's still very much in flux. So uh, again, it really depends on what we make of it at this point. So yeah. so um, tell us uh, a little bit about, um, I guess, walk us through the, your experiences there and some of the people you met and w what your overall impression of, of uh, what's going on down there is. Well, um, first, a lot of a lot of the core uh, volunteers who are there most days of the week, as you know, as, uh, you know, I sort of think every time I'm there, I see them there, <laughs> um, and I, I've been spending a fair amount of time. They remind me a lot of some of the best activists that I've worked with in my past, and the organizing abilities. Even though we're off to a, you know a sort of a slow start and extra rough in Sacramento, since we're working so hard just to be allowed to occupy. We've had, uh, that's really cut into a lot of our time. We would have otherwise spent, you know, drafting real writing on uh, grievances and solutions that we support, demands. Um, so we've had a lot of uh, adversity, a lot, a lot more, even though the, the police side's been great, um, we've had a lot of mutual respect with the police. That's been, uh, I, I don't know how unique it is, but it does, it's not headline worthy. <laughs> uh, um, Right. Well, I understand that certainly you want to, to do this in a way that's going to be productive and that you're not just going to all get rounded up and, and, and carted off for not having the proper permits and everything and all the all of that. But but at a certain point, I mean, isn't all of that sort of designed to distract from the the actual activism and the, the point of what you're doing anyway? I mean, isn't that the point of all of the hoops that you have to jump, jump through in order to just <laughs> occupy a spot? <laughs> exactly. It's 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 pretty ridiculous, and it does seem to have a bit of a chilling effect on people wanting to join us. Um, you know, either it, like a if they're not interested at all, then it gives them a point to gripe at us, saying you're wasting city resources, getting arrested every night. Uh, or I'll, I'll, we took a few nights off before the council meeting last week. I know. You know, it's sort of in. in you know, we we had made our point, and we wanted to wait for the council meeting, um, but. It, <laughs> we haven't made much progress, and, and we're just fighting for that basic right to assemble in a free park. Right. Well, you talked about the General Assembly. Um, perhaps you can give us a better idea of how this, uh, this is really working and the facilitators and all of that kind of stuff. Um, how, what's the mechanics of how this, uh, this protest is going? Sure. So at least at our encampment, we have uh, pretty much rotating facilitators who, uh, and, and we vote for everything that's... Uh, you know, mod like relatively important by a two-thirds majority. 
um, and we sort of have a consensus model. You know, we we wave our hands to agree, and we do like this to disagree, and then this if like that's so really offensive, we need to work out an issue now, and um, this if we have a point of information to add, these kind of things. This if you're off topic. Um, so we have a, a pretty decent system, and there's it's it's slow for for a lot of the newcomers to pick up, but it it has worked out really well, and, and we have been able to decide what directions to take, and and uh, we've been taking it a step at a time, but but each step is very thoughtful, and we're starting to spread the process out more and sort of save more important votes for Saturdays when the major like when the most people show up. And we're taking very close counts of votes. I, I've been impressed with some of the votes, counting votes up to like a hundred something, and um, just all by hand. But uh, it, it's it's pretty impressive, and it, it's very equal. Everybody has a voice. Everybody has a chance to go up there and make their point, and 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 try to you know, and it's it's a meta. You can offer meta solutions too, where where you're not just t talking about how what what we want to do, but how we're deciding things right now you know so I was there for a vote when we voted to vote by two-thirds in the future mm -hmm. um, so everything's on the table and everybody's for the most part people are respectful and there there have been a few incidents that the the local news were quick to feature on, on their news segments of people getting into arguments and, and sort of not following the procedure that everybody's agreed on upon and is allowed to request to be edited well, I, I certainly do admire your enthusiasm, and it is it is infectious. But um, but I I mean, playing devil's advocate here, doesn't it give you pause for thought how this the, this system of facilitators and the hand signals and everything has been implemented pretty much universally, pretty much in, in protests not just in the the U.S. but but in many countries around the globe. Within a matter of weeks, this supposedly spontaneous movement has has come about and been organized. Doesn't it give you at least a bit of pause for thought about how this is being organized and by who? It does a bit, but I have uh, in in my past uh, for the past ten years, my primary activist focus has been on drug policy reform, and some of our our best chapters have actually used uh, this similar model uh, uh, to, with great success and, and trying to keep it non hierarchical. It does seem that some of the bigger cities are getting more co opted. Um, of course, we we ha we see a lot more of that in Wall Street, of course. Um, I, we, I just had a, a new friend who came up the train from L.A. yesterday, uh, right after people, like right around the time people were getting arrested, and he explained that in L.A. it felt like all the celebrities were sort of co-opting, and, and it was just all getting very fake and silly very fast. Um, but so far in Sacramento, it's sort of been, it's been relatively small, um, and I think part of that is that we don't have that permanent encampment, and, and we can't really have that endless hub. Of, of activity and interaction, but uh, we haven't. A, a lot of us have been looking out really closely for for at least obvious co-op um, sort of uh, operatives, you know. Um, and it, it's been pretty good in Sacramento, from from what we can see. And and there's a few great minds uh, there that I just really love that are focused on ending the Fed and uh, and all all the issues that that are core to to me and what I what I've gained from from years of listening to you so right well I I was talking to Christopher Porter and Lawrence McCurry recently of the Canadian Action Party and the Occupy Victoria and Occupy Toronto um, uh, movements respectively and they were talking about how um, the facilitators seem to be people that weren't really known to the activists I mean they these are people who've been in the activist movement for a long time in those areas and they didn't know who these people were or where they'd come from how about in Sacramento do you do you know a lot of these people from your activist work um, I'm afraid not, and uh, it's partially just because I'm fairly new to the area. I uh, I moved to Davis about a year ago, and um, so I haven't. This is my so this is my first jump into activism in in San F Sacramento. So it's tough for me to tell, but I am I am getting more and more curious as as the weeks roll on to to sort of figure out, find out more about some of the you know more dedicated organizers. Right. Well, well, well. Certainly, everyone is sort of bringing their own uh, political ideology and everything to the table at these uh, at these movements. So, so talk about a little bit about yourself and and really, what do you think this Occupy movement is about or should be about? Right on. I I felt from day one that the the most unifying theme was getting money out of politics, and 
Um, I think the the language that our General Assembly agreed upon was, you know, one of our main talking, we're trying to come up with bullet points so we can really explain to people who are only getting mainstream news um, what we're about. And repeal of Citizens United is up there. But I really think that, you know, that's, that's like, that's the obvious starting point. But, but our, our system was so bought so long before that, that why would we stop there? And, and so I, I, I'm full for dramatic campaign finance reform as, as the closest thing I can come up with as, as a golden bullet. If I, if I had to ask for one solution, it would be for clean elections at the local, state, and federal levels. Um, and, and then from there, I feel we have a, a fighting chance to, to start steering the ship um, on all the other issues, like ending the Fed, getting, ending the corporate bailouts, derivatives, <laughs> fractional reserve banking, you know, all, all these core things. But Well, I think you're right. I mean, I think the, the electoral reform and, and making sure that the clean elections take place is so fundamental to any sort of semblance of a system that, that makes sense. And, and people... I. I know get very cynical about elections and they as well they should. I mean they, yeah. they are so bought and paid for at this point but but the point isn't just simply to accept that and just to go apathetically through yeah. life. I think the point right. is to try to restore something that right. that resembles uh, democracy and I know I know that word has become even a dirty word among this movement for some reason <laughs> because so, people yeah. think that it's actually contrasted to a republic but they actually yeah. go together. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I mean th that's extremely interesting to hear to hear that perspective and I, I think I agree with it and I know that you you stress uh, peaceful revolution as, as yeah. the real key to what's going on and and I agree uh, totally on that part I think violence is definitely not the answer but of course it raises the question uh, or at least the possibility if uh, if infiltrators uh, do get into this and start making this into a violent movement uh, where do we go from there and, and I don't think that's a bridge we want to cross so I guess the question is I mean are you are you concerned about that what can we do about that before it comes to that point that's a that's a great question i haven't i've been so busy at, at this occupation i haven't had time to find out about the more the the violence that started in europe um during these occupations but um at least for us i think our concern we'll, we'll start having more concern once we get into the, like the thousands on a regular basis right now like at our peak we have several hundred maybe a thousand but um, but that's not all the time. Most of the time, it's like one to three hundred people, um, and then that's only the hours we're allowed to stay in the park. Uh, we have to be out by eleven p.m. on on weekdays, twelve p.m. Uh, midnight on weekends, and then I think we're allowed back at five a.m. But <laughs> occupy when you're allowed to occupy. <laughs> it's pretty ironic, but hmm. we we really stress the the peace peacefulness every meeting you know like every general assembly like we explicitly talk about peace isn't just about actions you know you have to have nonviolent communication you, like violence can be in the form of words too especially dealing with the police but also dealing with each other so we've been very quick to break up um there were a couple issues that there was someone trying to start fires on the first day or two that i heard about um which sounded classic <laughs> um, and those were those were caught immediately and they were kicked out you know they're you're not you're I'm sorry you you don't get our one rule you know <laughs> so it's so, unfortunate I, but yeah it's true I mean I think the protesters have to police each other as much as they have to watch out for the police and um, it is a, a, a delicate line to walk in so many different yeah. ways because it can be taken off the rails so quickly and so easily, yeah. unfortunately. Um, that, that again, is an important aspect to all of this. I, I guess, um, uh, let me let me lay something out on the table for you and you can you can give your take on it. Um, basically, I, I think that the, these, the, the point of, of these, these, these Occupy movements, as you point out, I mean, it's ridiculous and ironic that you're being told that you can occupy from this time to this time on these days and things like that. I mean, the, the whole point of an Occupy movement is to say, these are our streets, this is our park, we can do what we want. So so it's kind of uh, self-defeating to, to give into that. But on the other hand, I realize, I understand that, that if you make it a confrontational thing with police, they're going to win in the end and the system's going to yeah. win in the end um, because they've got the, the jackbooted thugs and uh, yeah. you're not going to beat them um, at their game. 
dream. So, so to me, that speaks to the idea that, that ultimately what this has to be about is a revolution of the mind, because once we are able to, to really truly affect a change in ourselves, we live, breathe, eat, and sleep freedom and liberty, and, and they can't take that away from us no matter what they do. And when we express that in our everyday lives, not just when we go to a park and hang out with people, but in our everyday day-to-day -day lives, that's when we win. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Um, I, I've been feeling it a lot in the form of our teach-ins and educational workshops. Uh, that has felt really powerful and very, just the right level of organic um, growth. Yeah, and, and the, the variety of topics just from American history to, you know, just talking about the Federal Reserve or talking about how to form a resolution with a committee. You know, one of these more administrative, legislative, uh, you know, this very core democracy process. So a lot of that is very inspiring and I'm starting to, you know, every day of this movement I, I feel more and more optimistic of that and go, like that kind of revolution happening uh, that, than the violent one. Well tell us about the teach-ins and what kind of things that uh, people are informing each other about. Well I haven't, I haven't been to enough yet myself. I would love, I. I've been splitting my time between sort of volunteering and, and trying to document and record things. So I haven't been to as many as I would like. Um, yeah, they're trying to get more teach-ins about how to like preserve food, um, grow your own food, fix your bike, uh, fix your car if you have one, and uh, that kind of thing. There's been requests for that. I haven't, I haven't heard about them happening yet. But we're trying to get like a very full, full 360 of skills people can learn. And I did actually hear some testimony last night at the city council hearing that we had been starting to try to train homeless people in in ways that they can get jobs. You know, skills that they can get jobs with. So that that has been one uh, one thing I have heard about, but I haven't seen firsthand. But. Well, that is encouraging to hear that people are at least requesting that, and I certainly hope it does take place because. I personally would, would attend the Occupy even if just for that kind of thing and learning skills that that we can use to take ourselves off the grid, which I think, yeah. again, is another absolutely central key to, to actually winning this game instead of just uh, playing the losing side of the game uh, all the time. So so absolutely uh, very interesting. So I, I guess you're obviously not there right now. Um, any plans to yeah. go back? And in, if so, in what capacity? Uh, yes, I, I'm actually going to leave to go back in about an hour and a half. And um, because we're so upset about the, the city council meeting we went to yesterday, um, where they, they, they heard us, but they did, they, it fell on deaf, deaf ears. And it was pretty disappointing. I guess that you know, we had a big presence. We filled up the hall last week as well. And, and this week, we had like 40 people talk for one or two minutes. And 95% you know, of them made very cogent arguments that uh, I, I thought were well delivered. And the, the mayor offered to open a dialogue or, or expand our dialogue and, and come to the park and work on a resolution that he could take for us to Washington. <laughs> and that turned a lot of us way off. <laughs> and, and then there were only two council members that showed any sort of, like, that spoke at all after we spoke about this and uh and they were only willing to come to sort of a compromise where like oh well you can leave your infrastructure tents up with your media stuff and and but but maybe a couple person that like a couple volunteers that are running it overnight but other than that no no occupation no camping you know so we we uh we had uh, nine people arrested again last night and i will be going uh, to get arrested again tonight um, at uh, 11, just after 11 p.m. Pacific. So. <laughs> well, it's it's sad that we have to to do this, but I, I think we do have to do it. We do yeah. have to start putting ourselves uh, in the in the gears and clogging up the machinery of the yeah. system, and that's um, that's ultimately how it's done: uh, civil disobedience. So, um, yeah. my hats off to you and all the people who are going in there, knowing they're going to be arrested and, and yeah. doing it anyway, because <laughs> yeah. I think it is something we have to do. If we don't exercise our rights, we're going to lose them. So. Um, 
So there's a lot of hopeful things uh, going on with these protests that I think um, that, that do indicate the possibility of change. But I think anyone who remembers the 2008 election will remember how much value we can put in words like hope and change. So um, <laughs> until something starts really coalescing around this, I think I'll, I'll personally reserve my judgment. But but that yeah. doesn't mean that I think people shouldn't be involved. I think yeah. they have to be involved and engaged yeah. with this to, to try to make it into something useful. So, so absolutely very interesting, and I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to more coverage of this on Wiki World Order. And while we're on the subject, perhaps you can tell people about your website. Oh, sure. Well, I, I started uh, wikiworldorder.com about a year ago. Um, it's, it's sort of my way of going back to school. Uh, you know, I, I, I gave up on the... I, I was self-taught through most of school. In college, I skipped class, took the tests, and, and got it done. But I, I teach myself most things. Um, so this is my way of going back to school and studying all the topics that I want to in depth and then having a creative outlet to experiment with animation and, and you know, things I've just wanted to do for, for years. And uh, so it, it's been wonderful and, and therapeutic and, uh, and helpful. You know, if only my friends watch it, I'm happy just so they understand where I'm coming from um, and, and fostering that dialogue. And now that Occupy has begun and, and you know, sort of, the, uh, the first revolution, we have a chance to try to steer in, in the direction we want, you know, and I, I feel like it's our responsibility to, just like you said, like, whether it's going to work or not, I think it's sort of our responsibility to just go and try, you know, because it is an open forum. It's more of an open forum system than we've, you know, than our official system, and uh, so we might as well give it a shot. So I'm having fun to, to try a different kind of, uh, you know, blog and, and video uh, presentation to, to be a more on the scene reporter so uh, it's been fun and while participating so I'm very biased but <laughs> yeah but I think personally and I think people who've watched my reports obviously know this I, I think the idea of objectivity of the reporter is itself a canard that the uh, the corporate media has put put before us oh look we're so objective but but <laughs> they're biased in every single possible way right down yeah. to the selection of what news stories they will or won't show and um and I think if reporters are just open with their bias then you know where they're coming from so yeah. so there's a the, the bias isn't a isn't a problem at that point anyway um another uh, topic altogether but but certainly very interesting and and it's very 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 easy for people to snipe at things like uh, occupy the occupy movement and say oh it's all it's all controlled and so it's all going to be for nothing but uh, it's very very difficult to actually go out there and do something that will hopefully do affect change in the future so so my hats off to people who are actually involved in trying to do something because uh, if we don't try we're going to lose so um so morgan let's go it's uh, all, a pleasure talking to you and i certainly hope that we can continue to get updates from occupy sacramento as uh, as you continue to go there i'd be more than happy to thank you so much james for for all your work you're welcome talk to you later talk to you later